Ravensdale Hill part one. Here he is, the raven. Oh, excuse my outrage, but it's 3 a.m. and I'm fed up and need to lay him bare in order to make sure that everybody here can see him. He stalled me right when I was flying on fabled phoenix wings of light and gold and purest crimson. Each feather shone just like the sun, and every single barb of them an immaculate manifestation of all the effort I had put in to tame the beast it did not like taming. He tricked me into trusting him. Then as I turned to face the sun, he swooped on me and plucked me back. I'd come too light to fend him off. I had no fight, was not prepared. And having flown so very high, so much further had I to fall out of the sky. I thought he cared. I thought he'd save me. After all, there'd come a time when he plucked me, though in quite a different way, when lost in battle, he had been there for me. But now, stripped naked, cold and scared, I found myself alone up there, and as I found naivety, cried, Call out, bring Raven to your side. But my Raven, he did not arrive. Instead, I landed on my knees, found myself grounded by the beast. It ate my hips, sucked up my spine, crushed both my legs, and all the time. My Raven flew away. My Raven flew away. It all began on a cold winter's day when a woe tiding of magpies stole swift in low skies. There was frost in the air as they leapt thieves plunging their fare from the sprawl sacrificed life at the lonely roadside. His beak was a blessed relief as it brushed against mine, brisk, efficient, swift. It untethered the noose that trapped me for no other reason save to release a bird to the sky until in the glint glare of a low winter sun his eyes met with mine and the flick of the switch a bang of the gun. A can of worms was opened and a story begun. Your eyes, a pair of toys that demand to play. Can't tear your eyes away from me. A tribute touch to touch taboo, a place where words are inconsequential. And one long glance is more than ample to convey touching, but from a completely different angle. A steady gaze, an eyebrow raise. I fail to follow convention. I would rather hail the rise of modesty and thwarted intention than to condone the secret shared and the mercenary lies that hide in the space that sits between two illicit sets of playing eyes. I flew like a dove in the back of his false care and false love. My wings, my heart, they each beat as a drum, a tympanic rumble, a symbolic thunder, the clash of the chime bars, the crash of the gong. I searched for him at each turn, at each corner, whenever I ate or I spoke or I looked at another. And though those who were wise told me I had little to offer to a cunning old raven, save a veritable feast to satisfy the ravenous core of his vanity's hunger, and didn't I know he has yet loved another? But my heart was too light, my wings too shredded with fire to see for myself how far I might plummet if I flew any higher. Cassius knew, my friend. She comes as a wren. And now when I look back at that time, I do remember her waiting mouse-like in the wings, trying so hard to hold on to them. But the wren's home is the bushes and the sharp stone wall seems far away from the temptation of glorious flight and delectable dreams. Besides, love and the sun, they each of them blind, especially when stared at too long by one whose reason is clouded by a raven black form that is blocking that sun. He followed me here, he followed me there. Though he never came near, he never went far. And how I yearned for a fix of those eyes that might hypnotise mine once again. For his claws to become tangled in a web of deceit that, as a new kind of trap, kept a poor foolish bird tightly tethered to him. How could I have known he was cunning? How could I have known he was vain? How could I have known I was nothing more than a toy to be toyed with, a game to get bored with, a distraction from all that was staid and mundane? And if I were to sing too loud, or become too bright or too crude for his tastes, or what? If his lover found out, or I encroached in his terribly private and most personal space, they'd swoop and he'd chase and he'd bleed this bird dry as a wall where Cassius sat weeping silently waiting for her sweet friend to fall. But I didn't know. I hadn't a clue. You have to believe me or else all that then followed would be my fault which would break me. So the sun beckoned me higher and higher I flew.
basking in the affectation of the raven's attentions that honoured me still, and if only I'd had the sharp wit to observe that my magnificent rise had become less of a curious pleasure and more of a sadistic challenge to that raven blackbird. Then I might have been ready and better prepared. Instead of ditzy and doe, I'd whip frazzled and sun a bliss ignorant fool hitching the lift on the back of an out-of-date love ride as I sailed on the rays of a raging sun's glare. I turned my head towards the sun. I remember the sky was a razor-sharp blue. I recall that butterflies were soaring inside my belly whilst the air that was freezing was also hot too. I remember I imagined us talking, building nests. I dreamt we might travel. And when the first glint of warning came, which I did see in his eyes, I remember confusion because I was 100% certain I 100% knew he'd come as a lover and he could never, ever do to me the deed that indeed he had flown up to do. And yes, I remember making that decision. I chose to decide that it couldn't have been a predatory glance I had seen, but only a low winter sun, trick of a low winter sun light. I remember him circling. I recall wanting him near. And there was something about inhaling his scent and how thrilling to think I'd be noticed and chosen that I was the one that I was the winner not for one moment did I stop and think my love might be taboo and then a raven already taken would never be a suitable mate anyway for one as light as I come as high up and up and up and up and up I flew and then he swooped he moved in for the kill and then he plucked and then I fell Words alone cannot convey how it was that I felt that day. Words alone are inadequate vessels to carry the weight of a heart betrayed or to manage the monumental size of this broken bird's troubles. Words alone cannot suffice to explain the pain of discovering either that the raven's work wasn't yet done. And there was, as yet, much much, much worse to come. I fell in its mouth as I crashed to the earth. It snapped like the trap that it was and gobbled me up. Now just a feeble excuse for a once upon a time magnificent bird. It ate my hips. It sucked up my spine. Crushed both of my legs. And all the time... My raven flew away, my raven flew away.